meeting. Uh, oh, sorry about that, Pete. Um, okay. I wanted to be on record. Don, again, thank you for the great minutes. Um, uh, as we know, these meetings are recorded in compliance with the governor's executive orders. Uh, and this one uh, is exactly the same. Um, so welcome everybody uh, to uh, our meeting. Uh, we got close to having in, in, in person meetings, but we got thrown a little bit of a curveball. So hopefully I will be able to see all you guys in person. Uh, Tony, I really miss giving you a hug. Um, I just need you to know that. Um, so um, we have a, a, a special guest today, um, Mika from Boondoggle, Mika Kerr. Uh, and uh, Mika, typically we uh, uh, make people wait and sit through our entire meeting. So you have to sit there and maybe be bored to death. Uh, so I thought it would be good um, to give you an opportunity uh, to share with the group uh, your interest in being here today and, and the message you wanted to share with us. Um, we're excited to hear about things that you're working on um, uh, uh, there at the Masonic on uh, the corner uh, in Old Wethersfield. Um, so guys, this is Mika Kerr from Boondoggle. Uh, he wanted to spend some time. Mika, we try to keep this uh, because I'm typically the most long-winded one on the phone call. We try to keep this as um, as minimal as possible. So if you could stick to the facts and nothing but the facts, that would be great. So I will turn over uh, the next 10, 15 minutes or so, or if you need less, let, let us know. Um, but welcome to the meeting, Mika. Hi, well, thank you. Um, first off, as a, a point of order, uh, my, I pronounce it Micah, but it's all good. I, it's one of those names. And uh, some of the folks on here know that I might be as long-winded as anybody ever born. So I'll do my damnedest. Okay. Uh, yes, Leslie, you don't need to nod your head. Um, <laughs> so what I'm doing, what my plan is right now is obviously uh, I, I've lived in town here. Uh, not obviously. You, some of you may know I've lived in town here for about a dozen years. And I've, like all of you, looked at the old Masonic temple and, and imagined doing something with it. Uh, it just so happened at the same time I was also imagining opening my own brewery, which I was able to do uh, about five years ago now. And so as it has turned out due to a lot of, you know, going to Rocky Hill and trying to do something that's being delayed and then having uh, Roger, the owner of the building, put it up for sale, uh, it kind of just worked out magically that I was able to be in the position I'm in now is to try to open a brick and mortar in the town I live in, in a building I've been looking in the windows of for a decade. It's, it's kind of like, a, it's a dream come true, I'm not even gonna lie. Um, so the goal right now is to, to get it open and, and I'm trying to do just the bare minimum to open a brewery in that building, uh, simply because anything that's been vacant for 25 years has reasons for being vacant. Um, and, and, uh, those complexities are, are daunting. So I'm just trying to do kind of the bare minimum and then I will uh, gradually go further from there is the hope. Um, but what I'm here for today specifically from, from you folks is I will be facing a zoning meeting uh, where I am going to have to present my site plan and do a change of use for the building. And in a weird way, that's sort of a misnomer because it was only ever used as an assembly use and I am going to be returning it to an assembly use. Uh, just in the past 25 years, it has been, I guess, at some point uh, deemed like you know, derelict or what have you. So it currently has no use, I guess, is what I'm told. Um, I, I think I'm saying that right. I hope I'm not misspeaking. <laughs> but the end result is I still need to get a change of use and specifically turn it from within the assembly category, from a fraternal organization over to a um, brew pub brewery use, which I have already added those uses to the town zoning. So, uh, you know, really, I want to be able to tell you about kind of what I'm planning. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. I intend to brew some beer there. That'll happen in the basement um, on the ground floor will be bathrooms and uh, like a bar area, seating areas. And upstairs, the intention is to have a couple more bathrooms in case I need it. And um, up there, I will also have, um, uh, well, I'm calling it flex space because I don't think I can do a lot of programming up there unless I add an elevator. And that's just a 
an expense I don't know if I'll ever be able to approach. Um, but with that space, I hope to use it for community events, uh, you know, programming for my own business so that at times I'll hopefully be able to have uh, maybe like if I'm doing a thematic Oktoberfest type event, I can do it up there or um, on a selfish level, when I turn 50 in a couple of years, I, I'll have my birthday party up there, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so from that, you know, it, it's, a, I think, a pretty straightforward model that, um, you know, you want an example, you can go to City Steam in Hartford, uh, Willimantic Brewing Company out in, in, in um, Willimantic, obviously. Uh, and, and I think a lot of cities around the country have an old building converted into a brew pub and they tend to be pretty stable and, um, you know, they're not late night places. We, you know, I don't want to be there open till two in the morning. There's no benefit to that, especially in Weathersfield. Um, so, you know, I, I want to have a patio out front and, and be a good neighbor, frankly. Um, the food that I'm intending to have in there would be, uh, Mexican. Uh, specifically more like taco street food because I don't want to compete with anybody on the street uh, and I've been going around and introducing myself to all the other merchants on the street letting them know those intents uh, until I have a restaurant operational in there because I don't know if I will I don't think I will the day I open um, I think I'll probably just essentially be um, light you know m legally minimum food uh, you know what there um, but when I open, I want to be able to have, you know, if I don't have food, I'll have village pizza, you know, walking pizzas across the street or something, you know, <laughs> there's plenty of local help I know I can get to provide the food and, and help with the business, you know. Um, so I'm working with Peter and with the building department right now. So right now the work being done in there is to stabilize the building. Um, after last night's rain, I now am down to only six places where the roof leaks. So I'm going to go down there and sort that out in the next, well, maybe later today, who knows. Um, and yeah, basically just I'm, I'm, I'm protecting the investment and, and cleaning up all the 25 years of detritus while I'm working through the zoning that I will hopefully, hopefully have your endorsement or as I head to the town. And, and that's basically it. And I leave the rest for questions, and that way I'm well under 10 minutes. Um, well, you did better than I expected, so thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, I think um, there's, you know, economic development. Um, is, we're not really in the, in the um, a, approval business in the sense because we love all economic development as long as it makes sense. Um, we certainly want to support any of the efforts that you have, and there are things that we can offer um, through EDIC um, uh, such as facade improvement uh, opportunities, um, uh, you know, for that particular building, of uh, which probably at least 50, 60 percent of it probably is street facing that we could be potentially helpful for uh, with you there. But at that point, we would need to know, you know, obviously you have to have a specific game plan. You've got to go through the gauntlet of PNZ, et cetera. Um, you know, the I'm I am a hopeless optimist. So it's very difficult for me at times to pose questions that I may ask you right now, but I just, anybody that comes with us, we want to identify not only the strengths of, of the opportunity, but potential weaknesses to help you guide um, through whatever those weaknesses might be. And I know that in, in town, in that particular location, there are things that will probably come up with P and Z are things like parking for that particular facility which is super important. Um, I'm not sure based on your occupancy and what you're planning on doing, how many spaces that would actually be required. Maybe Mr. Oikel could, could share at one point uh, any particular insight on that. George Oikel uh, is our representative from the PNZ side of the, of, of the street. Um, and he is with us today as well. But we support anything, Mika, that makes, and I apologize for, for mispronouncing your name, it's a lifelong thing. I just no worries. I was as point of information. No worries. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, so, you know, from a, a a approval perspective, we've got your back. Uh, if you have a legitimate game plan, you know, if your finances are in place, um, you know, uh, uh, there. If you've got, if you check off all the basic boxes that you need to get a business going, there isn't anything that we would ever rule as being objectionable. Uh, because uh, as long as it passes town code, we have really no jurisdiction on that. But where we can be helpful is some of the wisdom that we have on the people that work 
with the EDIC and the RDA to help you in any way, way we can. But on the financial side, which is always key, a facade improvement is something that, you know, is something that you should look at um, as an opportunity. And maybe once you begin to submit plans on what you're planning on doing on the outside um, is where we can help you probably the most from an yeah. economic yeah. perspective. But again, you can check, you've got to check off the boxes. And yeah. as I said, you have to go through that gauntlet. Um, yeah, I'm familiar. So I'm familiar with. Pardon. I'm, I'm familiar with uh, the facade improvement program. I'm not going to be uh, doing anything with that at at this moment. Uh, I kind of have to get through the zoning hurdle before I look to that. Um, in terms of, like I said, doing kind of the bare minimum to get things open. Uh, that's where I will be coming to you folks for facade improvement. Probably, I guess I forget as a grant or loan or whatever it is. The program but that's more when i start to replace windows and uh do other things because i i kind of at this point i and i have i have the funds kind of i'll say without it in theory to get everything up and running i just kind of need to have an operating business going sooner rather than later and to take the focus to try to get funds to do windows that i may not need to do right now would take I cover 50% of that cost, I'm aware at least. And so I just, I'm, I'm really trying to be very focused on bringing the building back to life. It has no furnace, it has no electric, it has no water, it has no good plumbing. So <laughs> it's, um, it's a lot. Um, uh, and all in that realm of the, of the uh, mechanicals of, of the structure. So um, when I'm able to focus more on the aesthetic, uh, yeah, windows are on there, um, you know, uh, going to put in a patio at some point. And the whole front entrance, in fact, will be rebuilt, um, which that's the only thing I might consider pulling the facade improvement on sooner rather than later, because that will allow me to make the building uh, wheelchair accessible. I'm putting a wheelchair lift inside of the front um, stoop. And by doing that, I need to expand the, the existing concrete. And it's as you could, if you've seen, it's it's pretty dilapidated. And you know, I need to do something with that. So, um, one of the things, as I mentioned before, maybe George um, or Peter or Gary, who are more knowledgeable than I am on this, one of the issues, you know, I'm, I'm in the automobile business, and cars, you know, are made up of a zillion parts, but we're we're short computer chips right now, so they stop manufacturing for one little item. So you've got this big particular thing that is being slowed down because of one small things uh, that go into it. Sometimes the small things can derail you. Um, so on the parking side, I think that's something that I really think you should uh, focus on because even though you have, it sounds like the, bo the, the bones of a, of a business plan here, which is great, you've got to make sure that the, the parking and, and those issues, which I know will be an issue that ne you really need to look at that now, I believe, or as soon well, as you can. I have. Okay. I, I've, um, you know, and I don't know if you see, if, like you said, George may want to comment, but I've, I've gotten the parking study from Peter and I've looked through that. Um, I, I didn't go to the parking meeting, meeting the other day because it was advised against it. Uh, I don't want to be targeted as a, as a potential, you know, just let, let that be what it is, so to speak. Um, but, you know, we live in a village here. And um, if you want, if you want to be on Silas Dean and have all the parking in the world, you can do that. But in the village, you know, this is a building that once had an occupancy of 800 people as a fraternal organization, and I will absolutely not have an occupancy of 800 people. So when the building was built in 1922 and Church Street was built in 1836, all of those actions created a village center that is designed for us to be able to park in one location maybe with your horse at the time, I don't know, <laughs> and walk to the village creamery, to heirloom market, and go have cocktails at the Charles late at night. I want to be part of that. Uh, it's it's truly the reason I am locating here is the village. But, you know, we also have a church that occupies 20% uh, uh, of the village area, and a lot of that is parking, and it's just sitting there. And I think my communications with them have been very positive, and I know that the town has worked towards that as well. And I will obviously be doing a lot of effort in educating the public as to my parking plans. But fundamentally, this property is directly in front of a bus stop. 
it is directly on a bicycle path. We are in the center of the village of the town. And for that reason, I have all that infrastructure that you folks and your predecessors have built up over centuries. And therefore operating a business here should be, I think just almost um, a formality. Uh, my investors, I have so many people have reached out to get involved to help me. And I'm, I'm using just a, a, a gut number, but I will provide actual numbers in the hearing. Um, 60 to 70% of them live within <laughs> a 10 minute stumble, as I like to say. I mean, they're right in the village. So I know a lot of my customers are going to be very hyper local. And we, we're moving to this world. This is why people are moving to the village. They're buying houses in the village and they are going to be walking to the places they want to go. They want to walk to the farmer's market and walk to the brewery and walk to the restaurant. And that's why the property values are doing so well in Weathersfield. We have, we have a really great asset here and I look to be part of that. Right, and you're thinking about at one point, as you mentioned, a food and beverage license at one point, maybe not at the beginning, as you said, but that might be a, a second stage, a third stage. You know, talking stages is a strange way. I, I, I'm going to be going for that probably right up front in the sense that by licensure, and I have to, I have to probably clarify this with Peter as I get closer because it, it truly affects the zoning. There is a brewery use and there is a brew pub use. I'm going after the brew pub use because that way I won't have to go back and change it. So therefore I will be required to have food in some manner. Now the level of kitchen is variable. So I could have uh, Grange Fresh making, bringing sandwiches over and people can order right in my place and Grange Fresh walks them over. That's as simple as I could go if I need to and cover the legal legalities of it. But um, I know that I will be partnering with a guy I already have identified to put, um, essentially to locate his food truck in the basement. He has two other food trucks that will out be doing events, but in general, he will be making, you know, the street food, Mexican street food in my facility. Great. And um, you're gonna be obviously brewing there. So yep. you will need water eventually in the building, as you said, that's gonna be a key element. Um, the, you'll be, uh, from distributing out of that building as well. Um, uh, gray area. I, so, I mean, just for clarification, and this is something that's tough cause I have, to, how do you explain it to, um, I'm currently distributing out of the, the barn at my house. I think George was involved in that hearing back six, seven years ago when that was approved. Um, <laughs> but basically I have this barn on my property that allows that I have a walk-in cooler in. Now, anywhere I have a walk-in cooler, I might have some of my inventory that I, a customer may want. I hope to have almost no distribution out of Weathersfield because again, it's a village. Bringing in unnecessary trucking is, is not going to help me with my neighbors. And so it, it'll hurt my business, right? I, I'm, I'm acutely aware of that. So, but there might be a keg or a few in a cooler that is um, maybe a, a smaller batch of that um, uh, a high value customer of mine, like the flying monkey might ask for, and I would of course try to accommodate them. But in general, I would be moving beer from there to my Rocky Hill location, which is where I intend to relocate my distribution business from. So out of my house here in Weathersfield into my Rocky Hill location, which eventually will be my primary manufacturing facility and distribution site because it's uh, in an industrial area it's well more appropriate so the brewing that you do would be basically for consumption on on the property is that fair largely yes yep okay. I, I like to we like to call it a more experimental right because system sizing matters um you know you can build a a, a, a huge manufacturing plant for your automobiles right or you can build a smaller test facility where your engineers are working to develop the next car so Weathersfield is my engineering facility. It is, it's where I'm going to be introducing new beers. And if they catch on, then I will be moving those production to the other place. My, my high production beers will likely be produced off site and brought there, but it's, you know, it's not like tractor trailers. It's like my Toyota Sienna van can hold 40 kegs. It's plenty. <laughs> so. 
Great. Well, that's um, um, what is your next step? Are you scheduled uh, for a PNZ meeting? Are you on an agenda? I just not yet. Um, my I had some staff changes in my team. Um, I I had to I've had a hard time finding uh, the right engineer for the site plan because this property has such a long history that there's a lot of people who've been burned there. I it's I'm learning a lot about some interesting stuff. Um, nothing to do with me. <laughs> But uh, it, it affects me now, so here I am. So I'm getting um, I'm getting uh, the site plan together for Peter, and I guess there's a meeting planned at some point. But he just got back from vacation, so we're gonna figure that out and 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 get on an agenda. So, well, personally, I applaud your efforts. Uh, the idea of of having you know a brewery in Old Wethersfield, um, um, it, I think, is a wonderful thing. It's it's probably a missing piece, and I think you're right. There's a lot of towns. That have got the local brewery. So anything that we can do to assist you, um, you know, we've got your back on that. Um, I, I think um, being mindful of the of those items that we talked about, you know, the parking side, which I think is it sounds like you've begun to turn some rocks over on that, is really important um, because P and Z, um, um, they they're for the most part is is a finite operation. There are laws on there, and things can always be modified or changed. Yep. potentially but just want to make sure that the, you've got a good working knowledge on that because i hate to see i've seen other businesses or opportunities get to the finish line and there'd be one little thing that comes up that you know that stymies and and obviously you opening and, and developing cash flow as soon as possible is really important to you so that's one reason why i bring that one particular item up but again it yeah. sounds like you're going to turn the rocks over as, a, as an interesting aspect to it is um we actually within my development team here we have kind of identified that we probably are are in a position to actually um, get transit oriented development maybe assistance at potentially a state level or you know with having it being on the bus in the center of a village it's not exactly um, on a on a train line but you know we're we're trying to put in something that isn't auto driven and that's what TOD is really all about so you know, I'm, we're kicking all the tires there, and I, and um, you'll find that I'm over researched. I think some of the folks on this call may already know that, and uh, sometimes to my own detriment, as Peter can attest. And 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 I'll just you know do my best to make sure that my team speaks for me and 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 um, hopefully shares the vision. You know, like that's all I can be is the uh, the figurehead, I guess. Right. Great. Um, thank you for that. Anybody, um, George, any input? You're on mute, uh, George, which is usually my issue. You'll have to unmute yourself. George, we, you're on mute. You still can't. George, you're muted. If you hold the space bar down, George, it's the easiest way to do it. Mr. Carson, that's a trick. Just hold the space bar. Damn. All right. I've, you know, you learn something new every day. I've been wondering when it was going to happen. And there it is. Thank you. Send him a, if you want to send him a message, he might see that pop up on his screen. Because you can do the, the chat. Oh. George, you're, uh, you're still on mute, George. There should be a microphone uh, button at the bottom of your screen that you can hit, or if you hit the one inside your box where the little microphone is, it's red with a little line through it. Well, George is working on that. Anybody else? <laughs> um, Mike, uh, hi, I'm Marco Case. Good to meet you. I just was wondering, um, I have a very close friend who's one of the owners over at Firefly in Bristol. I don't know if you've crossed Which paths one? with them at all. Which one? I'm sorry, uh, Marty Hummel. Okay. And and, da and Dana Borg, both of yeah. them actually. No, very well. Awesome. Great. Yep. W welcome, and uh, I wish you well in the whole endeavor. Yeah, I've known I've known those uh, Dana for freaking 15, fourteen years since I mean since the homebrew shop, you know. Yeah, and Marty Marty is one of my closest friends for like twenty five years. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Great. Yep. 
they're great guys. In fact, for many years, they were without a doubt my closest uh, connections in the industry. Um, I don't see them ever anymore. Everyone, you know, you get busy, so. Sure. Okay, guys, in light of time, any other specific questions that we can address? Cindy? Yeah, just a quick question. I, I mean, it, it sounds like there's a lot of uh, renovations and rebuilding of the interior, the plumbing, the heating, and so on. What, what kind of time frame are you looking at to assuming everything goes well with PNZ? Yeah, this is actually something that always cracks me up because if you ask me, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm going to say, oh, it's not going to take long. And then, of course, as you get into it, it always takes longer than I want. So ideally, um, the, the actual renovations that need to take place are kind of minimum. The work that I'm doing now is, is kind of the bigger job. We have to fix a structural problem. Believe it or not, the, the Masons made an, an engineering error when they did a renovation at some point, which is also not ever recorded with the town, the renovation isn't, <laughs> but they put some some supports where there was once a steel beam, I think, and I don't know, but it's, we gotta, we gotta put in new concrete footings and stuff. That stuff doesn't take long. I mean, it could be done in a week or two, but as it settles out, it takes a little longer time to get the wood to kind of settle back into shape. Um, so that's one thing, but the other is that, um, you know, it, the real delay for me is going to come down to liquor authority and health department and things like that. So for me doing the construction, it could be six weeks, but it won't be six weeks because you need the inspections and, and there's obviously, you know, maybe the computer chip in my car is, is back ordered right now because you just, once you, once you order the ducting, you might have that, but you might not be able to get a, a 16 sear, four ton air chiller, you might need an 18 sear, you might have to buy a 14 sear. It's, this is where, what we're dealing with. So, you know, I, my hope was to honestly really have a, a sense of where I was at by October 1st, uh, but that's a lot closer than it was when I first said it. So it depends on, on that zoning, right? Because I'm not building internal structures in the building. I'm replacing areas that were bathrooms with bathrooms. Um, I'm putting a bar in, uh, which is, believe it or not, a very simple process. You know, um, so it starts with tiling the floors in the areas that get wet, the bars, the bathrooms, and putting in drainage and putting in plumbing. But you know, a plumber can rough out a whole house in a week. So, well, it sounds like you've got your to-do list. Um, 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 well, well in front of you, and we hope that things move um, in the directions that you want. We certainly want it to. Again, if there's anything that we can do down the road um, um, on the financial side, facade improvement, or any other things that we've been involved in on new business, uh, we look forward to that opportunity. So, good luck on what you're going forward. Um, any other questions for Mr. Kirk, Mr. Carson? I uh, just it's um. It's a little tangential. It might be more for Peter, but it, it goes to the, the parking and the transportation issues. Um, is there an update on the, the Putnam Bridge Trail? Are we getting any indication from the state that they intend to start that project next year? We did um, resolve the uh, con potential issues with the maintenance. Uh, I think uh, there was some issues about snow plowing, whether the town's going to you know, mow the grass and pick up litter and that kind of thing. So we, uh, uh, at least in um, in certain terms, agreed to that. They have not come back with their, what they call PAL agreement. Um, and I have asked them and they have not followed up with us. So uh, remains um, at this point uncertain as to the start, start date on that. Uh, they are, uh, however, committed to the project, but now it's a matter of uh, timing. We had several meetings with them to try and move that along and now it's the balls in their court. Anything else specifically for Mr. Kerr? George is unmuted now, so. Oh, George, did you have yeah, something? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> uh, I'm glad he's come forth with, you. can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I'm glad he's come forth in this site because the site has had difficulties. We've had a lot of approvals in it. 
they haven't worked out. And I understand there are some physical aspects to those previous uh, act activities. But uh, I, I look forward when you come to the commission in the coming month that you uh, present the parking issue with Peter and he'll explain how he deals with parking in Old Wethersfield yep. to the commission and how you fit into that. And if you intend to do other things in the future, it might bother me that would like any trucking or anything out of there, because I think the parking in behind the building is limited. But again, in Old Wethersfield, we don't seem to require the parking for businesses that we do up in the rest of the community. And that's because we have a composite parking operation at Old Wethersfield. But Peter has to deal with that on a regular basis. The council and others, the commission, would be concerned with that. So uh, you do have a limited site for that, as we know. And uh, I don't know about your second floor and things regarding any access to it for any future activities, but Peter can get into that and explain it to uh, to the commission when, when we get together. Good luck. Thank you. Well, I hope you go ahead with this. I'd like to see it occupied. I know all of Weathersfield. Yeah, George, uh, to, to, to answer even that last statement first and then mention parking or, or trucking again, uh, I am all in on this, uh, to be to be frank. Uh, this, I, I've, um, <laughs> if this doesn't work, I'll be squatting in the basement. Um, <laughs> I won't be because that's illegal, I know. But uh, I, I, am, I am in contract on the building and I'm not in a position to let it sit empty. So if I am denied, I will be back with another something until I'm able to make something economically work there because I am 100% committed to this because I factually, um, I, I can't do anything else. Um, they don't hire Gen Xers anymore, you know? So, and, and my brewery, my brewery is well liked, so there's no reason to keep pushing it, you know? Um, Anyway, that said, um, the trucking, I, it's absolutely a horrible spot for trucking. And so that's why, again, I really want the bare minimum. In fact, I could produce as much as potentially uh, 2,000 barrels, maybe 3,000 barrels of beer in that basement if I really pushed it. But uh, I don't think I should produce more than 1,000 there. And 1,000 barrels is, so you know, not a lot um, in beer world. Um, I, I, I don't want to have a constant supply of grain coming in. I, I won't in fact be doing any canning on site because then I would have to bring in different, so there's not enough storage for that. Um, there's only an eight foot ceiling in that basement. So it will never be a really good production space. In brewing, you need a 20 foot ceiling. So hence- I would agree I with you. I would agree with you on what yep. you just said. Yep. It has its limits, that's all. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a customer facing um, location for me. Uh, you know, it's it's purely for for retail in my world. You know, right? Exactly. Well, again, thank you for uh, bringing this stuff forward. Um, we appreciate the time. Um, if there isn't any other questions, um, we'll continue on uh, with the uh, standard part of the meeting. I said Cindy, I like, yes. I like Mirella's yeah. mug. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just have one other question and that is, uh, I, and it just sounds like a great idea and I'm just so pleased to hear your enthusiasm and, you know, uh, ability to uh, move forward. Um, I, um, I, you were mentioning that it, it's, a, it's a space that could accommodate 800 people, but you expect it, it's really going to be more of a smaller gathering, but I'm wondering, is it capable of uh, hosting larger events? Um, how do you kind of envision its capacity? Yeah, as, as currently drawn, okay? Uh, so as to say, nothing's finalized, but it's pretty pretty close. Um, I think the ground floor occupancy, including staff and include, excuse me, the, the ground floor occupancy is I think 158, don't quote me on that. Uh, but the when you include the staff and the kitchen in the basement and the brewing in the basement, I think it's like, Anyway, the number is just, it's below 200 for the ground floor. Uh, the second floor has a higher capacity, but again, I, I, on the zoning that I intend to bring in the next month, that will not be included. I, I don't intend to open that right away because um, it's, 
I don't have a plan for it is one thing. <laughs> I don't have a, a set design. You know, like it's it's gray area space. People don't like to go up to the second floor. They want to be wherever the main thing is. And so to go and do that, I'll end up adding like 200 capacity or something. And that's not really relevant. That's that's really going to be more for in the future for winters. It's I look at it as it, it will be my winter patio is going to be the upstairs. And in the summer, those people would be on the patio, right? So between the patio and the ground floor, I think there's no more than 300 people. Maybe it's a little more, but um, I'm happy to email this. Um, if the if the group is, I'll send out the plans I have, the numbers on there. Um, I think all all told, with all three floors fully activated, maximum capacity was 704, but that's including the patio. Um, and it won't be. <laughs> I mean, that's it's impossible to have that many people there. It's. Um, well, we hope you get the opportunity to get that many people at one point. Yeah, well, That'd be Christmas a tree problem. lighting day is it? Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Um, thank you for your time. We appreciate you uh, sharing your time with us today. Uh, please keep us in tune with whatever you, we can do to support your efforts. Um, and uh, and again, you're more than happy to, to stay on the meeting. Uh, but we will start our standard agenda at this point. And I'm going to email you guys, whoever got was on this email. I'll email the the plans as they stand, just so you can see the layouts that I was working on. Okay. Excellent. Again, yep. thank you for your time. Thank you all. All right, guys, if we can just start, um, uh, Peter, do we have anything to vote on today? I think we do have a close to a quorum. Uh, one, I don't two. think we have anything to vote on, no. Okay. Um, why don't we get right into the development projects uh, updates, please? Uh, real quick, um, keep on track here. Uh, we've had a couple ribbon cuttings the last couple of weeks. Popeye's uh, Grand Cafe on the Silestine Highway and Nails on Main and Old Weathersfield. Thank you for those who participated. Um, for, uh, the pharmaceutical building on progress drive is is getting near ready for a building permit so they uh, we've been meeting with them so that construction should start soon they're making progress on the daycare center at 1199 silestine highway as you drive by there you may have seen the news about the borden and their success in landing uh, sally's pizza so we've issued a building permit for them to renovate space on the ground floor for sally's pizza so we look forward to those folks coming to town uh, probably have three different interests in the thousand Silas Dean Highway, but I know I say that every meeting. Uh, I got another one today. Um, you've probably seen the press on the new owners of the former um, uh, Clearinghouse Auction Gallery at 207 Church Street. So that's Square Peg Pizza and a potential brewery going in there. So those plans are uh, being put together. Uh, to submit to planning and zoning at some point in the future. We just talked about the Masonic building, uh, 936 Silas Dean Highway, the office building sold. Uh, I was just contacted by an architect today. We're gonna meet tomorrow to talk about some plans for that building. The Chips restaurant has submitted an application to PNZ to have a permanent outdoor patio. Chase Bank is now uh, making significant progress if you've driven by there. Uh, the Puritan, uh, the former Puritan site uh, the Starling Physicians Medical Office Building, once again, is also making some significant progress. I did speak with Joe Sulo uh, in regards to the ABC Burger Project uh, down on Middletown and Maple Street. Apparently, he is um, potentially going to actually do that project. I know he had listed the property for sale, but it sounds like he's come to the decision to go forward uh, with the original plans. The Atlas Tile Building up on the Berlin Turnpike uh, also sold to Joe Sulo. Uh, he's putting together some plans to uh, do some renovations to that building. Uh, he might be asking for facade improvement money. He's got a couple of businesses that he's also looking to put in there. So we'll keep you posted on that. The con building on Wells Road, we've met with a couple of different developers who are interested in that property. I think um, they're nearing negotiations on a final uh, buyer. So no plans have been submitted yet, but once again, that is an active project. And then lastly, we've been working with the new owners of the former Rite Aid building on the Silas Dean Highway uh, to try and encourage a couple of different tenants to move into, move into that space. So got a lot, a lot of things in, uh, in motion. Uh, which is great. And we kind of cover the gambit. I mean, the Grand Cafe and, and the food that they offer all the way to Popeye's, two different uh, products on the Silas Dean Highway, but diversity is great. Uh, we continue to see growth.
Pete, um, one last thing. I know that we, uh, Jordan Lane had the fence uh, installed in front of that. Is the, is the owner, the actual owner, been in contact with you? Uh, the, the lease, the person that owns the lease for the uh, company that has it in Jersey? Yeah, so we, that was a, a, a light enforcement order where we asked them to secure the site so we did not get continual um, vandalism in the building, people dumping in the back. Uh, so we finally uh, got them to agree to put up some uh, temporary fencing to sort of seal off the building. I have met with a developer uh, who is interested in some in potentially doing some housing there, tearing down the building. Uh, he is running the numbers and is looking at uh, the feasibility of that. Um, he may be coming back to the town to see what assistance, if any, we can offer there. So uh, that might end up becoming a redevelopment agency project, depending upon which way that goes. But there's nothing formal uh, at this point in time. We have spoken to both uh, the lease owners and the, and the property owners. Uh, as well. So uh, we continue to engage with, with all of those uh, parties. Great. Any questions for Peter on, on uh, updates? Yeah, Peter, uh, I was driving down the Burlington Turnpike the other day. Uh, they're doing some work with a bulldozer on the property right next to where the old gas station was, where I think BP Industries is, where you first come on the highway from Wells Road. Okay. You know what's happening yes. there? So we approved a um, a new build, a granite showroom. It's a company from Meriden. Um, so they uh, have permission. Uh, if it's the same property, it's just as you come on to the highway yeah. from the on-ramp, it almost yeah. right where the on-ramp merges. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, I think it's called Granite by Temponi. So I should have probably had that on my site. I haven't been up there to, to notice that they start moving dirt around, but um, yeah. so there's a new building uh, that has been approved there. Thank you. Are they moving um, out of the Hartford location on Airport Road? No, uh, they're from uh, Waterbury. Okay, because I thought Temponi was the uh, people that own the place uh, near Pistrito. Uh, um, it's probably a different um, different Temponi. group, but um, yep. Okay. Mr. Any Chairman George here. George? Yeah, can I say something? Probably Please. more something for Peter, if I, the, uh, this, this commission would like to hear it. I have a second complaint from an owner on the Silas Dean in the same complaint of the year about the board and the white siding on it. And Peter, I still don't remember as much white siding in the original design of that building as there is there. It was supposed to be more brick oriented like the area south of Mill Street. And uh, to hear that again from an owner of a building and I'll, I'll tell you where it is. I don't like to get a person in trouble, but the thing is, he's in, he owns the building, I believe. He's certainly the tenant at the corner of Silas Dean and Millster. And uh, I, I don't know what to say about this because I even mentioned, Peter, I mentioned it to Joe Hickey, our advisory committee. And he says he doesn't remember it being as white a building as in the original design that we both approved, but I don't know. What do you got to say? And now it's, I, as far as our review, we spent a lot of time with design review, adjusting uh, the final design. Uh, and actually the developer was very complimentary to the design review uh, committee for making the criticisms that they made of the building. So um, I'm pretty confident that the final design colors, all of that are, are very sympathetic to what we, had approved through design review and as well as planning and zoning. So I'm not sure, you know, where that complaint is, uh, what's that directed to, but um, I, I've got nothing, but well, I don't know who I, it's directed to either. Except yeah, I, I, I've received nothing but uh, positive uh, compliments to the uh, impact that that architecture has had on the Silestein highway. Okay. I hear you. Any other questions guys in development project updates? Uh, one question about Rite Aid. There's some work going on inside of it, Peter. What's that about? Asbestos removal and gut and gutting the inside. They left a lot of shelving and you know all sorts of other stuff. So these guys are trying to uh, gut it so that uh, you know there's a vanilla box there for somebody to come in and um, do what they want to do. Great, Judy. 
Um, Peter and, and the group, uh, I see on Facebook that there are references again to, is it possible to get a uh, Trader Joe's in there? Have we reached out to Trader Joe's as a commission to see what, what it is that they would like? Um, you know, I think that now that we have the Borden and we have the apartments on uh, Ridge Road, we have a little bit more affluence in our younger people now. And uh, I, I think it would be of us to reach out. Everyone would like to have a Trader Joe's there. I'm, I'm just asking. Um, I heard from Carrie Wood that they are definitely, Trader Joe's is going to uh, Glastonbury. That's too bad. That's a missed opportunity for us. Yeah, she seemed pretty definite about it when I saw her at the ribbon cutting on Saturday. Any other questions um, regarding development project updates? All right, guys, thank you. Uh, Pete, I know we, um, on, on business outreach survey, um, I'm not sure who is, if, if Denise is still involved in, in working on that or not. Um, how many uh, comments did we get back? Do you have that at your tips? My recollection, I, I don't have it in front of me, was uh, about 60. Uh, Denise has been out on a, on a, a family medical leave for the last while. So um, I have not had the time because of that to go back and summarize all the responses, but uh, hopefully um, once we get our part-time economic development person or Denise's back, that work can be done. Okay, understood. Um, any questions on business outreach guys? Um, 60 doesn't sound like a lot of number, a, a big number. I don't know what that, um, I mean to some, but I'm not sure what that's a half a percent or 2% on what we sent out. But um, if you got 60 responses and they're fairly well um, across the board, we could get some pretty decent insight on 60. I mean, you want as many as you can, but that's, I don't know, 60 is better than, than zero. So um, once we dig into that, um, hopefully we'll discover some stuff that we can be helpful on. Yeah, for, for those people who took the time, it is it is valuable information. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, Peter, could you, I mean, do you have a sense, you know, whether or not the responses are positive? Are they negative? Are they, you know, uh, helpful, critically? You know, any sort of, uh, you know, just thoughts on that? Yeah, there wasn't, um, at least the, I, I reviewed the uh, hand, handwritten, um, and there, there wasn't a lot of strong sentiments positive or, you know, a lot of people didn't take the time to, to be thoughtful and submit, you know, uh, either negative or positive criticism. So I'll be interested to see if the online versions, people took more, more time to give us specifics that we can work on. So as I say, I'll do, we'll do a, uh, a formal report and summary of, of all the comments and, you know, put it on uh, maybe hopefully next agenda to talk about Yeah, and I understand Denise has, uh, I mean, I know uh, has been almost uh, really not in existence in light of the things that she's working on and, and with. So I know that you've got your uh, your work cut out for you, Pete. I'm, I'm very, you know, we spearheaded that. I like, think like anybody else would love to see what it looks like. So um, if there's anybody here that would like to maybe uh, review those, Peter, maybe we can take that off your plate um, and we can go in and review those. Uh, if there's anybody here in the group that like to do it, I certainly would be would like to be involved with that. Um, so if anybody has an interest, let Peter know or shoot me an email and we can set up a meeting and it's doesn't, there's obviously not a ton to go through. And it'd be good to see if there's anything that might be timely um, that we can look at, uh, that might be time sensitive, I mean. Um, so Pete, um, if you wanna send out an email to the group, stating anybody interested in, in maybe putting that review together, um, we can take that off your plate and, 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 and begin to work on that. Okay. Um, tips, Peter, tax incentive program? Uh, same situation. I just have not had time to, to close uh, the loop and, and finalize that and get it in front of uh, town council. I did, um, later on in the agenda, you'll see there's a tax incentive. There was a tax incentive request. I did um, 
as part of that process, explain to the town council what our recommended policy is going to be. And they uh, followed that in terms of voting on that tax incentive. So I've started that uh, conversation uh, with the council, but we need to formally uh, finalize the actual policy and submit it to them for comments. So um, it's on my to-do list. Um, the Thank you, Pete. Any questions on tips? Um, from the group, uh, the Salstein Highway. I mean, we, obviously, we've been talking about this for six, seven months. Um, I think we got kind of a, um, a bracing um, uh, meeting uh, with the with with the state because that is a, a state road on what we can do and not do there. Um, I'm hoping. I'm I'm jumping a little bit ahead, um, but I'm wondering if there might be anything in the American Recovery Act that we might be able to potentially use on anything that we can do for beautification. I think some of the more simplistic stuff that we can do, uh, but for those of you that were on that on that call, um, the the state was um, they were um, just factual, and uh, the facts that we got from them um, really didn't allow us to do um, a ton at this point, unfortunately. Um, but um, I think we should a lot of it put, does boil down in funding, obviously. Um, so that's something that we might be able to look at, um, uh, hopefully down the road. Any other questions on Salstein Highway? Okay, guys. Um, under new business, uh, the American Recovery Act's program and funds. Um, yeah, I did have a question on the Silestine Highway. So you had a, a meeting with the state um, um, Department of Transportation, I'm assuming. And so, is that is that part of an ongoing series of meetings? Um, what, what's our next uh, bite of the apple in terms of being able to interact with them? In terms I, of think it's, I, I think it's identifying the apple, Cindy. It's <laughs> people we can take a, a bite out of it, unfortunately. But um, when they were, they weren't trying to be wet blankets, but it was a kind of a wet blanket meeting uh, with regards to um, uh, what we can and can't do from uh, a, a road diet was discussed. And they said, based on traffic count and the size of that, that that particular stretch um, the main stretch would not be suitable for a road diet, which is one of the things that we talked about. Um, uh, and we can, it's just because they share that information doesn't mean if we have a will to really want to push it, I think we can. They didn't necessarily close the door, but, the, and they didn't, they showed us where it was, but they didn't open it really at all. Um, and I think what we just, and I started the meeting was, look, just give us the facts, let us know what we can do and can't do. Um, and um, again, uh, the meeting wasn't designed to be a wet blanket meeting, but it kind of came across like that, especially with respect to the things that we'd like to do there. You know, things like the bike path were discussed. Um, um, slowing traffic counts down there was discussed um, and they were not complimentary uh, with regards to those initial ideas that we had uh, to help maybe beautify or slow down uh, things on the South Dean Highway. Um, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh was weak on that, if you will. Um, Judy? Is there any possibility that under the new um, infrastructure plan that local projects might be um, <clears throat> something that could be done? And I think that if we do want to do that, if there is a possibility, I think we need to get our ducks lined up first so that it's a shovel ready pro uh, project, you know, um, when the money comes to the town. Um, I, I agree. Um, but again, in this case, it's, it's identifying the shovel and where we put the shovel on this. And a big part of, again, what we wanted was that was, we talked about a road diet for that area and they just were, were like, that wouldn't, that's based on what we know, that would not work. Uh, in that area. And most of the things that we talked about doing would require us slowing down the, the traffic there, um, bringing in lanes and, you know, potentially getting rid of the suicide lane in the middle. It's a significant uh, process, unfortunately. But again, they weren't being negative. Frankly, they were just being factual on what we could do. But, you know, um, um, if there is anything that we can identify that might work in that area, that's something that we need to to, uh, to look at is, but to go back to Cindy's point, we don't really have an apple at this point to take a bite out of. Um, uh, but I think we should, we should share our concerns and our wishes with our state legislators so that, um, you know, again, when this comes down the pike, we can jump in. 
if there is money, yeah, certainly as you say, if there's money's available in infrastructure, obviously, if things pass the way they look, there's going to be some money. Um, uh, agreed. Any other was, questions regarding? Yeah, Go ahead. yeah. So, was this meeting part of the mobility study, or is this uh, was just a meeting that we called? Pete, I'll let you address that. Well, yeah, it was in, in a meeting that I initiated uh, to start a conversation about our wishes to do certain things on conceptual to do certain things on the Silestine Highway going forward. Uh, they did give us a designated person. Uh, so if we uh, continue to have those conversations, we do have a, a designee from the DOT to work with. Um, I think we kind of uh, said thank you for your input. When we when we retain our economic development uh, coordinator, that will be something on their agenda to, to continue to discuss going forward. We still have some money. Uh, if we were to put a, a, a plan together or at least put some specific ideas together, uh, we would have to retain an engineer to talk to the DOT in the same language and justify whatever ideas we come up with. So it's by no means uh, a dead proposition. It's just that the, the DOT gave us their uh, reality check uh, about their position on certain issues and that we will have to be mindful uh, of all of those concerns um, as we you know, meet with them again into the future. So we did leave it on the table that there will be follow-up meetings. So um, it's just a matter of, uh, as Mark said, you know, getting our ducks in a, in a row and then approaching them again. Uh, there is funding potentially out there. There's always funding out there for, you know, state uh, and local projects that we can pursue, but it's really a matter of getting them to agree uh, what level of improvements are acceptable given the DOT concerns that they have for the entire corridor. Jumping on that Greater Hartford Mobility Study, I mean, I think it's important that the town reaches out to the folks that are organizing that study to have the same kind of a sit down just to talk about transportation and connectivity and those types of things, because I have a feeling whatever, and they're going to be developing a plan that's supposed to be done by the end of next year, I think. Um, that's going to talk about all these issues. And, and if we're part of an integrated Greater Hartford plan, it's almost, you know, it's, they may be driving the bus a little bit. I mean, afterward, they're going to have to deal with DOT, but I know that they've met with the city of Hartford. I know that they've met with the, with the, with East Hartford. They've met with like every um, neighborhood group in Hartford to talk about it. So I think we need to just talk to them to tell them what our interest is. And, and my, my biggest fear is that we'll just get left behind unless we really get out there in front of them in terms of whatever plan they're ultimately going to propose. May I, 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 I'm, I, am I allowed to make a comment here at all or no? Um, at this juncture, I'm, unfortunately, no, but there would be an area at the end that you could for anybody from the public. But at this point, no, no, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so on the mobility side, um, do you want to coordinate something, Mr. Carson, on that and reach out and, and with Pete on, because I think we learned a lot when we had the meeting with DOT to tell us, you know, to, like to use Pete's expression, it was a reality check um, for us, both good and bad. So I have no issue if you want to coordinate something and, and um, put it together for the group. I, I think that would be a positive thing. Yeah, I did reach out to them through their website uh, a couple of weeks ago, I didn't get a response. Um, so I'll, I'll follow up with that. But they also have regular, they haven't had one in a few months and Peter's been on a few of them I know and they're, they're very informative. They're the, the Zoom or these Microsoft Teams meetings that they have. Yeah. And um, they're, you know, they're really interesting to be a part of. And so I think that, that you know, they're talking, you know, with, they have $16 million, you know, they just got funded to, to put together this plan and, and, um, you know, it goes from everywhere from bearing, you know, 91 and, you know, and putting I-84 on the ground and all these other things to just connectivity. And it really does look out. And I think that's one thing that we need to do. And I say it a lot is we need to look forward 10, 20, 30 years in, in, in terms of the way people are going to be getting around. Because um, we have a lot of potential in this town. You know, we're all, re we're very walkable. We're very bikeable. We have to realize that there are a lot of people on the Silestine Highway that, that live on the Silestine Highway. And, um, you know, and you can't safely bike on the Silestine Highway. And so, so I, the, the, somebody needs to take care of that. 
you know, it's like we just can't assume that everybody needs to take side roads or ride their bike on the sidewalk in, in, in order to get home, you know, from their work or their job if, if, if that's their only mode of transportation. So, so that's just, no, I don't need to go off on that. But, but yeah, I'll, I'm, I'll definitely reach out again. I don't know how much, um, hopefully I'll get a response. I'll let you know. I'm shocked that no one responded. Um, get on them, Tom. If anybody who could get them to respond, it's you. Um, and obviously anything that you might need through Peter, um, you know, with regards to, we just would like to, would like to be informed and be a part of whatever that next uh, potential meeting. Now, would we do, do it, request one ourselves with the people conducting the study, or would you just want to be participate and just uh, in the Zoom meeting? Actually, I asked, you know, that was part of my email, which they didn't respond to, but I said, right, will they be reaching out to the surrounding communities in order yep. to sit down with them or or do they want the surrounding communities to reach out to them that was my one question because i would think as part of this plan that they should be reaching out to the to the communities around hartford that are affected especially if they're taking the time to meet with every neighborhood group in the city of hartford itself and they've already met with hartford and they met with east, east hartford too and i think the east hartford angle probably has a lot to do with the fact that john larson is behind a lot of this um but but I just don't want to be left behind with whatever sort of they, they put together. Why don't you contact John Larson's office, Tom? Um, I think that was to you, Tom. I think Julia mentioned, unless you shook your head on that, I may be reaching out. Yeah, yeah, I was just, I was shaking my head. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. if, if, I, if I don't get any satisfaction, I'll go right to the top. Uh, great. Um, so American Recovery Act's uh, funds, um, have we identified Peter yet or Gary where we can actually um, use the funds? I know we talked about maybe trying to help maybe ABC uh, coordinate some type of a, an effort there if there'd be anything we could do to help him uh, in that location. Obviously they were sidelined because of COVID. I know if you guys have read the, the, the actual item, it, it, to me, I interpreted really more as kind of a, a local um, PPP program um, uh, that would be, and a lot of it is very COVID related people that may have been, um, uh, businesses shut down or minimized or had to lay people off or couldn't uh, develop or add on because of COVID. A, a lot of it was COVID related unless they've modified it since I let last look, but is that still fair, Peter? I'll, I'll uh, let Gary, uh, jump in. Gary spent more time than I have. We have reviewed, uh, the uh, guidelines that they've put out. There are certain categories of things that we feel comfortable will be funded, but I'll let, um, and Gary and I have had numerous conversations about this. We haven't come to any uh, conclusions yet, but I'll, uh, I'll let Gary uh, jump in at this point. Okay. Um, and to Peter's point, we've had a number of conversations about it. I've created a very loose structure and outline. Um, you know, in my experience with federal grants, especially federal grants like this, where Congress gets together and says, I have an idea and let's pump out some money and the presidents agree. Um, they never really do the devils and the detail conversation. They just say, okay, well, here's the broad spectrum of how you can use it. And then they have a habit of coming back afterwards through a monitoring or an, uh, you know, through uh, an, um, having the office of inspector general come out and they actually come through and say, hey, you use the funds incorrectly. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so what we're trying to do is ensure that we're providing these opportunity to access the funds in a way where three, five, 10 years from now, and I'll use 10 years as an example, when they pumped out neighborhood stabilization program funds, they told you what guidance to use, and then they changed the guidance uh, over the three and six years that they had. So in year 10, when they came out to audit you, they actually said you used it wrong, and then they asked for the money back, um, which is still by the way, an ongoing fight four years later on whether or not they can get the money back. Um, but the point is what we're trying to do is really um, hone in on how we can use it, how our finance department feels comfortable using those funds because they have to put the name on it as well, but not do it in such a matter that it's so restrictive that we can't benefit. So when you look at some of the surrounding communities, I've been frankly blown away by how some of them just are using it for whatever they want. Um, almost to give the impression like, come get the money back when you need it. Um, one of the things that 
you'll notice when you look at the state's plan or other communities, the ones that have a high percentage of low to moderate income individuals living there, um, they are also entitlement communities that receive community development block grant funds. Their focus on economic development has a lot more flexibility than ours does. Um, because not only does it have a component that focuses on the individual for job creation, but they can do it geographically. So they can find a depressed area within their community and say, we want to bring a business to it. So we're going to give business incentives. We don't have that capability. Um, so I'm trying to be creative um, to, to allow us some stimulus for um, being able to drive businesses here. Our main focus, what seems to be coming up, and this is something more of a conversation for the group at a later date is um, this category of tourism, travel, and hospitality. It seems to fit very strongly within our warehouse of what we have for, um, for current capacity here and the ability to expand that capacity. And I think we should capitalize on it. Um, trying to think the other big one that jumped out. Uh, housing uh, is that secondary level. Um, affordable housing or workforce housing also has a pretty strong component. Again, entitlement communities have a lot easier time using that creatively. Um, we're going to have somewhat of a, res um, of a more creative structure that we have to put in place, which might be targeted properties, right? Where you, you put a large amount of money into one or two properties versus into several spread out throughout the community. Um, and then the third category that seems to be popping up is broadband um, connectivity. Again, that one's a little quirky because my interpretation of that is more towards um, benefiting low to moderate income community, communities with access to fiber or high speed internet versus allowing fiber just to come in across the town for accessibility purposes. Um, so that's kind of like the, a brief outline. I think what Peter and I have been kicking around is this idea of who and how do we get individual stakeholders to the table to help develop this and kind of finalize it. Um, we're not there yet. I'm not ready to present that skeleton to any one particular group just yet. Um, uh, but then when we are ready, the question is, does it originate with the EDIC RDA? Is it the tourism group since we have a board that's specifically around heritage and tourism? Um, obviously the council needs to have some play in it, but are they at the beginning or the end? Um, or in the middle or throughout. So, uh, you know, I started this conversation with talking about Congress not being able to put the devil in the details. I think that's something we need to work through here as well. On the housing side, uh, Gary, um, with 341 and Pete, 341 Jordan Lane, I mean, is that a potential opportunity um, to bring that developer to the table? It, it is. Um, I think that's probably your largest capacity. Um, and if I, you know, all things being equal and not having a plan in front of me, I would say that's probably a, your biggest bet for return on investment of those funds. You know, the other thing to be considered when you're looking at these is, and this is more my professional opinion than anything else, um, that money can get chipped away at pretty quickly and you might not have a lot of benefit from it. This is a large, chunk of money, tranche of money um, that can create a large return on investment for the community if used correctly. And if we have a program that's so wide open that anyone can access it, you know, and you've got 50 projects that are going on, you're not going to get as much return back to the community on it. And from my perspective, these are the types of programs that create revolving funds and ongoing stimulus and, uh, you know, stronger money coming into the tax base and, and can really grow a community if you use it correctly. So it, I know a lot of people, you know, a lot of the surrounding towns, um, not even surrounding towns, but towns in the state kind of immediately came out with a plan and this is what we're going to do. What they've done is they've taken existing plans and just trumped them up a little bit. I think this is, we want to take our time to find the right plan, the right key to unlock the right lock. Um, and I think rushing to be able to say, hey, I have a plan in my hand is not necessarily the best thing for the community. Well, I think when we talked about this a few weeks ago, I was probably longer than that, was you know everything that we can do that to improve quality of life and return on investment. I think those were kind of the two biggest issues. What, was, what serves the town the best you know, to the, for the taxpayer and what brings in the most benefit and income wise to the, to the town. So those are the two things I think, obviously, I, I know we, we all agree on. Um, 
Okay. Um, any other questions on the American Recovery Act? Okay, let's go into item B in our new business, part-time economic development coordinator. Um, for those of you guys uh, who uh, aren't aware, uh, we're, I'm sorry, George, did you have something to say? No, I don't, thanks. Oh, okay, you're making hand signals there. I didn't no, know you were gonna um, So uh, we are looking for a part-time coordinator uh, to work uh, in Pete's department. You know, we requested $50,000, which the town council uh, did provide us. So, uh, and Gary, thank you for the fight on that. We appreciate it. Um, uh, and we have had that published. Peter, how many um, applicants have we had so far? So the deadline was last week. We're, we are, uh, the HR department um, has decided to keep it open until we, we pick someone. So at, at this point, I haven't checked the file today, but last I knew we had seven applicants, which is a good a good response as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I did look at a couple of the resumes before I went on vacation um, and there were some good candidates. So I think um, I'm waiting for guidance from the HR department, but I think uh, we will review those and you know make some decisions uh, about potentially ske scheduling some interviews sooner than later and get that process underway. If we do get candidates that you know, file in that time, we'll, we'll take those under advisement and see what we want to do. But I'm eager to, um, you know, get that process underway and get some interviews scheduled. We are going to have a problem where to, where to put this person. If anyone's been in our office, you realize there's no, uh, nowhere to put them. Uh, so we'll have to figure that out uh, as well uh, as part of uh, this, this process. But nevertheless, I think uh, we're off to a good start and, uh, I'm eager to get, get somebody uh, on board as soon as we can. Peter, do you want to take, it could be a soft date, but maybe we can turn it into a hard date. Do you want to pick a soft date that we should put down and will we begin to schedule interviews because time can get away from us, obviously, on this. Do you have anything do you think we could, are we a, a week away, a month away? I was um, planning on, uh, you know, over the weekend, you know, going through all the resumes and, and trying to prioritize, you know, the candidates based on their qualifications on paper, at least. And then, um, you know, hopefully, reaching out to them next week, and getting some, getting some dates, you know, a week or two down the road for interviews, assuming that works with the with the HR department. So, um, that's my schedule, at least in my mind, anyway. Well, I know nobody's more motivated than you um, to find that candidate. So, um, I don't think we have to worry about a, a cattle prod on helping that uh, along. Uh, let me know whatever we can do, uh, Pete. Um, any other questions on the economic part-time economic development coordinator position? Okay. Um, tax incentive request 46 Arrow Road, Pete. Uh, so as, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, we did get a tax incentive request from a uh, developer. This is for the, the uh, self-storage project that was approved, I think four or five years ago up on Arrow Road. Um, uh, so we are, have been approached by a developer representing a particular self-storage uh, uh, vendor called Extra Space Storage. They don't go by that name in terms of their corporate identity, but nevertheless, they um, put together a pretty lengthy uh, pro forma analysis uh, for the council to review. The council did agree to give them uh, a five-year uh, tax uh, incentive uh, following the guidelines, or at least the draft guidelines that we had worked out previously. Uh, so the five years uh, involves 100% the first year, 70% the next year, 40%, and then the last two years are 20 and 20. Um, there were some tough questions from the council um, and some tough questions for me about the, you know, the, the value of giving a tax incentive to a self storage user. Um, uh, however, at the end of the day, the council did agree uh, to do that. Just so you are aware, this is a $16 million project. And as we found out when we did our own research on self-storage facilities, these projects do generate a significant amount of tax revenue each year. Uh, the estimate is the uh, tax revenue uh, the first year that it opens is about $320,000 a year. Um, so, uh, and then that can obviously increase uh, for a period of time and then we'll depreciate uh, down the road. So they gave us a, a, a pretty good analysis of how much tax revenue and 
the costs and the benefits of the project. And as I say, at the end of the day, uh, the town council voted to uh, to grant that request. And thanks, Pete. And just so the group knows, the uh, when we went through the uh, um, the adjustments that we wanted to make to the tax abatement policy, uh, the project basically we agreed that we didn't want to give much more than fifty percent off. And the numbers that uh, we came up with and advised the council on that Peter just outlined, one hundred percent, seventy, fifty, twenty, twenty. I think was was the numbers that did come out to fifty percent. Is kind of what we what we did. So we did not exceed uh, what our new uh, um, uh, legislation, if you will, or bylaws that we want to put in for the tax abatement, it fit into what our structure that we talked about and agreed on uh, as a group. The other thing too, uh, which uh, was a mind blowing is we discussed also the amount of uh, building permit uh, revenue that would come in uh, from that project as well, which was pretty significant, Pete. What was the number? It always kind of freaks me out. Um, they, they always tell you it's more than it is, but the number that they provided in terms of the estimate of the project was uh, a one-time fee of $136,000 when they file for a building permit. Right. So that's income that will come into the town just in build, building permit uh, income that goes right to the bottom. Um, so anyway, I think that's I think it's a great project and um, it's, that's a weird lot that they're on. And I think it's going to be a great use for that particular spot. Any other questions? On yeah, I just I just have one comment on that. I just found the discussion to be really interesting. So if anybody wants to go to YouTube, if you haven't seen it, just to get that town council meeting because it was pretty extensive and and you're hearing the pros and cons of the whole thing. I and mean, you know how I feel, and most of you do anyway, about storage. Um, if you can locate a facility back in that area that increases the capacity in the town and might lessen it for other parts of the town, especially the Silas Dean Highway. That was the clincher for me. So it was just, it was, it, it, it's, I think it was the August 2nd council meeting. If you find that on YouTube, it was, it was a really good discussion. Uh, agreed. I, I have a question. Um, I, I, I apologize, kind of going back to the engineering position, but is there ever a need for an internship for engineering college students um, that could help out? Uh, engineering or economic development? Engineering. Uh, engineering has had interns from UConn and we're pursuing a group of interns again. We had a group last uh, year who did a bunch okay. of things for us. So um, if you've got a student, engineering student, um, you know, send them to the engineering department. There's always, there's actually a lot of projects that they're working on. Great, thank you. Well, on that, on that note, how about economic development? Do you work with interns? Uh, we do. Um, depends on the intern, but we have had interns through here in and out uh, over the years. So usually we try and find an individual project rather than just have them, you know, hang around. And, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot of work um, to manage an intern, as probably most of you are aware. So it really depends on the, the individual um, and their abilities. So. Okay, any other questions uh, on item D, the tax incentive request? Mark, you skipped over C real quick, I, and I won't spend oh, a lot of time bad. on that. That's okay. I'm sorry. So, so the Tourism Commission is uh, working on this new program that the state is offering through, their, through the uh, state uh, arts de um, department called the Connecticut Municipal Cultural District Program. You can get an area in your community designated as a uh, cultural district. Uh, there's a whole process to go through. Uh, it's basically arts-based, you know, museum-based. Uh, it potentially opens up some funding down the road. There's no funding now, but the uh, Heritage Commission is working on this. Uh, they're, they're, we will have to go to council. So there's a whole elaborate process that we have to go through, but it's just one more uh, tool uh, for us to have uh, as we uh, market the community and as we look at uh, funding uh, sources to implement you know, some of the uh, things that we've been talking about. So I just wanted to make everybody aware of that. There we will have to have some sort of a public meeting to explain the program and allow for some community uh, input, input, but it's basically just a, uh, uh, help to help promote. Uh, there's only one community or maybe two now uh, in the entire state that's uh, gotten the designation yet. So it's something uh, uh, we've now met with the state to talk about the process and 
have a good understanding about that. So uh, the Heritage Commission will be uh, working on that at, at their next couple of meetings. Pete, has Ken Lesser's wife reached out to you who has the theatrical company? No, no she hasn't. Interesting, okay. All right, my apologies on skipping on that. My no bad. Anything else on that? If anybody would like to comment on item C, which I missed. Okay, if we can go on to the manager's report, Mr. Evans. There's nothing going on, but I'll find something. Um, so let's, let, let's start with the one that seems to be near and dear to everyone's heart, COVID. Um, last week, or let's go, yeah, last week. Uh, so the report comes out Thursdays. I, ha I haven't checked to see today is my meeting. Uh, used to be in the morning prior to this, so I'd have the most recent update. Now it's at four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but we jump from yellow, um, which is typically um, between five and nine positive daily cases per 100,000 um, over a two week rolling period. We jumped to red, we skipped over a completely orange, which means we had more than 15 positive uh, cases per 100,000. So it was a very uh, large jump. I wanna say we went from seven cases the week before to 50. Um, I will say that one of the things that is a positive or a silver lining for us right now is vaccination rates in Wethersfield are high. Uh, for the population 65 and above, we're over 90% have been fully vaccinated. Age 45 to 64, uh, about 78% have been vaccinated. Um, 25 to 44 is 76%, and 18 to 24 is about 77% fully vaccinated. That 12 to 17 age range um, is uh, about 57% fully vaccinated. So we do have some high vaccination rates compared to our, even our neighboring towns. Um, but, you know, as I keep reminding people, the vaccine is not a cure. Um, it just lessens symptoms and potentially uh, you, you're, you end up being asymptomatic at all. Um, but really the intent is to try to reduce the stress on the um, ICUs and, and hospitals system, the medical system. Um, so we currently have a mask mandate in town hall and all town buildings and the requirement to socially distance whenever possible. Um, there is a conversation going on. For those of you who've been following it, the governor did not push for a statewide mandate, but he pushed the responsibilities down to the local level. Every town seems to be doing something a little bit differently. And so yesterday I was on the phone or on a Zoom call with the uh, Central Connecticut Regional Council of Governments, our CROG, um, which is, I wanna say 29 member towns, but don't quote me on that, quite a few of them, um, to talk about whether or not we wanted to put a regional mask mandate in place. And it's mixed opinions and mostly because the enforcement capability is just not there. And that's really the concern is who's gonna enforce it and how do we enforce it uh, and what does it look like? So we're. We're doing our best to come up with that solution. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm meeting with my emergency operation team later on this afternoon and we'll kick around those ideas a little bit more and some of the conversation that came up. Um, while we were on the call, interestingly enough, the Southern Connecticut Council, Regional Council of Governments actually sent a letter to the governor imploring him to put a statewide mask mandate in place. And there were 22 towns that signed on to that. So if the if our CROG ends up pushing forward and, and pushing for a regional mask mandate, that'll be 29 more towns plus 22. You're at, um, you know, you're, you're, you're not quite at half, um, but you're just shy of it. So it's a question of who else will fall. The biggest point or that's trying to be pursued right now is we don't want to shut down the economy again. We don't want to shut down businesses, um, but obviously we're being sensitive to everyone's personal and professional beliefs regarding this. But, you know, the general point that um, was being passed around on our call, at least, was that, well, if you want to keep businesses open, then enforcing a, putting a mask mandate in place would help that. Um, and there was some pushback on that. But, you know, it's, everybody has their own opinion on this. The question is, what's the government's role and what should we be doing? So uh, more to come on that. I don't, I don't have an answer or decision yet on what the town's gonna do. We did move to Zoom meetings. Um, I seem to be getting some pushback on that. 
we'll see how that shakes out. Um, but my opinion right now is Zoom meetings make sense and masks within town buildings make sense. So that's what we put forward. Uh, next thing, uh, police chief search is well underway. We had around 28 applications from around the state, uh, from around the um, United States uh, come in, uh, quite a few from out of Connecticut. Um, those 26, 28 are being narrowed down to 15. Uh, we're working with a small group of council members to narrow that 15 down to the three to five. And then we'll actually interview those three to five um, to be in the finalists. We're working out exactly how that plan will uh, play out the interview process. We uh, will absolutely have some community um, either gathering or community input, whether that's a combination of a meet and greet and or community members serving on a, on a panel. Um, we're not sure yet, but we are kind of working through the process on that. But the assumption is to hopefully have a candidate by um, announced end of September with, um, with them starting shortly afterwards. In the meantime, I brought in Thomas Daverin to um, manage functions within the police department. For those of you who don't know him, um, he retired as a Colonel from the state police. That is, and Tom, you can, Pentelo, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that is the highest um, non-elected or appointed position within the Connecticut State Police Department um, as Colonel. They're yes, about under, under a commissioner. Um, after he retired from the state, he served as the chief of police for the city of Groton. He was also an interim police chief for the uh, town of East Hampton. Um, his title here is the, uh, he is the interim superintendent of police or interim police superintendent, depending upon how fancy you wanna make his title. Um, and frankly, he's doing a great job over there. Um, um, keeping that operation running. It would have run smoothly regardless. It's a great group over there, um, but it's good to, you know, you always need someone at the top to make a decision, yes or no, or push it one way or another, just to make sure um, it continues. Um, I have no concerns um, with that department. And I certainly have no concerns with him in place. Uh, there are things fun to talk about. MDC is working on water mains throughout town. That kind of never ends with them, I feel like, but they're over on the Pine Lane area as well as Ridgecrest and LaCava Lane. Uh, the town's been completing their, or has completed their crack seal program. Um, and they're doing pavement marking at, we do about 50% of the town lots every year. So they're doing their pavement markings within those 50%. I'm just looking outside to see if they happen to be in this one. Uh, spring pro paving program's over. Our fall paving program has started um, and you've probably seen the trucks out there um, uh, working within, trying to see if I can kind of generically say where they are. Highland Street, Robbins, Heather Road, Daly Road, Coleman, Johnson, Prospect Street, uh, and they're around. And Trying to think else, what else is going on out there? Um, just as part of COVID, we're obviously keeping an eye on those programs that are out in the community and what the impact may be if we have to shut things down. Right now, obviously things outside have a better probability than those things that are going on inside. But again, the intent is to try to keep the economy open and keep um, programs and projects running as long as they can uh, while keeping in mind the health and safety of the, of the town. Um, other just quick notes, we may be having a special meeting next Monday, um, specifically to address the um, roofs at Highcrest. We have some funding applied um, that was approved as part of the budget process, capital improvement funding, and, um, and we want to get those roofs or the portion of the roof completed uh, prior to school beginning. So we can't wait until the next council meeting, which at this point is mid-September. And that's all I have. Well, that's enough. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Um, that's a lot to deal. Thank you. Um, is Pat on the call? I don't see him on the list here for uh, the town council liaison. No, he had another meeting. Okay. He, he was here with me when we got out a little bit late and then he has to take off. Okay. Thank you, uh, Pat, spokesperson. There you go. Uh, uh, P, and, P and Z. Mr. Oikel? All right, I'm going to step out for a minute.
George, anything to report? No, I have nothing really new. Uh, I think Peter took, takes care of most of the things that are going on. We've held no meetings really this summer. And uh, we look forward to taking up the issue down in Old Weathersfield that was discussed just before this and other things. Thank you. Great. Thank you, George. Ms. Kane, Heritage Tourism. Yes, I'm right here. Um, I, I feel as though I have not uh, attended meetings lately, but I have the last meeting was uh, in June. Is that right, Peter? Yeah, okay. Um, so um, one of the things we were talking earlier about the Recovery Act funding, the uh, Heritage Commission is trying to uh, pull together a promo video for um, Old Weathersfield for the com community and or for advertising the community. And they thought that the Recovery Act funding may be um, a good source to pay for that. Um, the Historical Society, um, I'll just tell you a couple of events that are going on there. The Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet started last night, I think, and it's on the lawn of the Keeney Center, and uh, it runs through Saturday, um, I believe. And I saw an advertisement for the, the Charles where you can get a drink and a charcuterie board or dinner or whatever to take to, with you to watch the, the, um, the play on the lawn. Um, I'm gonna push uh, the 9-11 uh, exhibit at the um, uh, Keeney Center. Uh, it's uh, Weathersfield Remembers 9-11. And uh, we've had very good feedback about it. And I invite all of you to please come and uh, wander through the exhibit. And there's a film that goes with it as well. So please do go and visit that. It's, it's running until September 30th. Um, there will be a craft fair on uh, October 2nd. Uh, the Historical Society is <clears throat> promoting that. And the Web Dean Stevens is up and running now. And uh, the quote that I had was that they had 1,900 visitors already. Um, since they opened up again. Um, so that's pretty impressive. And I have to say from the uh, exhibit that the Keene Foundation is sponsoring at the um, Historical Society, we've had people coming from all over, North Carolina, other parts of Connecticut, other parts of New England. So, uh, you know, I don't know how they found out about Weathersfield, but they wandered through and saw the banners out front and decided to um, come in. So um, I think Old Weathersfield is beginning to really um, enlarge its audience. Uh, the last thing is Porch Fest is August 28th in Old Weathersfield, and that's the shopkeepers have individual events at each of their stores. I think that's it. Peter, you think I got most Judy? of it? Yes. Judy, that was an excellent turnout. I was down last night for the Shakespeare presentation. And I was very impressed with what how they did that. And uh, I'd, I'd caught them practicing about a month ago out there. And I was I went down to see what they, they could do. There was a very large crowd down there. And I'm glad to see something like that. It adds even more to All Weathers Field than we are able to provide already. So that's a good move to have that. I agree, I agree. Judy, okay. the, um, the, the company that does the tours out of the cove, are they operational? Pardon me for yeah, not knowing. Yes, I, I believe they are, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, well, you know what? I don't know about Sailaway tours, but I know Captain Morgan is advertising and doing tours in the okay. cove. Slip, Slip Away River Tours is doing tours. He's doing yes. tours too. I thought so, yeah. Yeah. Great. They're also they're also hosting the after hours for the Chamber of Commerce. I don't know if you have a chamber person on here, but just so you guys know. Oh, hi, Deborah. I didn't even see you. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. No worries. Great. Any other questions uh, for Judy on tourism? Thanks, Jude. Uh, chamber liaison. Um. So first, I really again want to thank the King Foundation for that exhibit at the historical and if you haven't seen it 
you really have to go. And I was lucky enough to have Judy show me around and it, it's just incredible. So I really thank you for that, Judy. It's, and we, I've gotten calls on the, from the, you know, on the chamber phone inquiring about it. Oh, good. Um, yeah. And there's just saying that they're hearing it word to mouth. Cause I asked where, how did you find out about it? So um, I just, I really wanted to mention that. Um, Thank you. I also wanted to talk about the Romeo and Juliet. Our uh, Times Fool is one of our chamber members who I've been working closely with for the past year. Um, he is really involved in our town. And last night was incredible, incredible. And the businesses uh, in the village really benefit from that. Uh, a lot of the businesses that I spoke to, they people had stopped bought food. The Charles after the event was had to stay open late, so they're really bringing bringing a lot to our town. I give him a lot of credit for that. Um, on Morgan, Captain Morgan, um, as Micah said, we're having a business after hours, which I'll send out after this on the twenty fifth. Everybody is welcome. He's going to give some boat rides. He's hired a caterer. He's got a bartender please uh, attend and the whole point is to push push our local businesses so um, I'll, I'll send that out to you directly if you haven't seen it on our uh, e-blast um, October 29th we are having our beer and barbecue again keeping our fingers crossed uh, Micah is uh, uh, doing the beer again so come and enjoy his beer we're having um, food local entertainment, uh, tickets are gonna be $40, all inclusive. And I'll be sending more information out at that. Again, it's at the barn uh, at the Webb Dean Stevens. What's uh, the date, Deb? Of that? October 29th. It's on a Friday night this year. So um, yeah, so we're excited about that. We're excited to be able to do some, some events again. Um, I, and one more thing I wanted to mention about Porch Fest, uh, they are selling t-shirts, which are really cute. I don't know if you've seen them on the, on the websites, but go to the uh, local merchants and pick those up. Uh, they're, they're, really, they're really cute. Um, let's see, what else do I want to mention? Um, Deb, I hope they're going to sell the t-shirts uh, with the insignia for bikes on Maine. That was really beautiful. And that would be a great t-shirt for them to raise money. I, you know what, Judy, I don't know that that's on there, but. I think, especially for the springtime, uh, a plain t-shirt with that on the front would be stunning. I'll mention that to them. Yeah, I'll mention that to them. That's a great idea. Um, Let's see, what other, my, our other chamber member is the Mary's, Mayor's Charity Ball. They're a chamber member. Uh, they are doing a wine and whiskey on September 13th at the Charles. So anybody who has, needs information on that, I've been pushing that out, but feel free to, to reach out. Um, tickets are $100, get a full course meal, wine, whiskey, and cigars. They're going to have a separate area for people who are smoking. So don't worry about that. It's going to be inside and outside. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then we're going to be working on holidays on Maine. So I think we, we got to go ahead that we can start working on that. So yeah, events are starting. We're getting busy and hope to see all everybody. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, under uh, Any other questions uh, for Deb Raymond? All good, great. Um, so under um, Chairman's report, we are in need of, um, and I, this is really for, I guess, really more for Gary. I know appointments uh, for EDIC, I think we're short several um, members on EDIC. Um, and I know those have to come And Gary, I don't know if you, if we need to publish anything or work on anything, or if we've gotten um, uh, uh, any um, interest on that, but that's something that we need to, um, Discussed. I think we are down. I think our bench. We have a very good bench. Uh, they're all starters, uh, but the starters get tired, uh, and we need uh, some backup on that. Um, and I know RDA would be something that's approved by the by the council. Um, the other thing too, and it came up when when Micah had asked to uh, to speak, 
we do need to add an item uh, on our thing for uh, public comments. And I've got to remind everybody uh, that if you are not a, a bona fide member of the group, you are by design are required to hold comments until the end, just to be respectful to anybody. Rarely do we have anybody on the call. Rarely do we have guests, so to speak, but that is protocol and it's something I wanna be fair to everybody in light of what I had to share uh, with, with, with Micah. Um, Okay, under subcommittee reports, uh, marketing and communications, Pete, do we have anything that we need to uh, talk about? Uh, just um, as I finalize the uh, tax incentive policy before it goes to the council efficiently, either it would probably be more of a financial subcommittee. Uh, so that'll probably be the next, um, next agenda item for that. Okay. I do uh, have a question about marketing. Uh, and more for Peter, do we have any of the bags left that we were using for the um, new homeowners? The canvas ones or the plastic? We have a, we have a couple the of The canvas kinds. ones, I think. The yeah, ones I that believe, we were filling. I believe we do. I'll have to do an inventory. They're down in the, um, down in the garage part of town hall. Okay. I would suggest that with all the new houses that are being sold in Weathersfield, that even if there's nothing in them, we should put a note card in there saying, welcome to town from the Economic Development Commission and get them out there. They're not doing any good being in a box. So let's get them out so that all these new homeowners actually know that the town cares about them <laughs> and welcome good them. To town. Good idea, once we get some uh, bodies here in the office. You know what, I could take that on, Peter. I could um, pick them up and drop them off at the realtor's offices. If we can just get a letter, if you could uh, maybe pull out of the your files a, a letter that welcomes people. Yeah, I, I think it's a different, uh, we, we had talked about getting them into the new residents' hands who are who have moved into town in the last year or two. That's a different, that's a different process probably than just dropping them off at the realtors. So, uh, so let, yeah, well, let's, let's talk offline about that. Okay, and I'm happy to drive around and drop them off. Okay. Um, thank you. Anything under financial strategies, Pete? I know that we have delved into the uh, tax um, language. Um, we, we are anticipating a couple of uh, facade applications. Um, as I mentioned before, we've talked to several people about taking advantage of the program now that we received some additional funding. So. Um, we'll probably need to con convene that group uh, to deal with that as well. We don't have any right now, but we are anticipating several coming in. Great. And to implement what I shared before, um, if there's any public comment, uh, Mike, I see that you're still with us. I don't know if you had anything to share. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I just, when you guys were speaking about some of the transit related stuff, uh, it reminded me of a conversation I've had with a few folks, um, and I'll, I guess it's I'll, I'll be a little bit more holistic rather than specialized for myself as a resident, right? Not as a not related to my property in Old Weathersfield. Uh, Weathersfield was very closely related to Hartford um, since day one. Well, I guess since Hartford was founded, I should say, and um, we once had the horse. Uh, uh, trolleys that uh, terminated, you know, near Church Street that went up Hartford Ave into Hartford. Hartford is the center of, of attempting to do transit oriented improvements and uh, alternate forms of transportation. And there's a lot of effort to connect biking and what have you. Some of that related to pre COVID commuting patterns. Um, I just, as a related for my business specifically, but as a resident, I, I just wholeheartedly would love to encourage everyone here to do everything you can to get funding for things like bike share, um, the scooter program, the link scooter in Hartford, I've contacted them, I, I'm offering to help pay for a charging station in front of my brewery, because to me, the ability for somebody to take a scooter up Hartford Ave to their apartment in downtown is a great economic benefit to me as a business owner, but also it takes zero parking spots. Um, and that said, you know, bike racks, um, I, have a, I have a bike path directly in front of my business, but I don't know 
I don't know where you where you would park your bike were you to ride to the place and I can speak for the beer industry and to say that you will generally every single weekend day have a crew of 20 to 50 bicyclists come to your brewery guaranteed and so I'm telling you that's something to expect once I open so I would love to figure out a way to use these economic development funds that are coming from a federal level right now they're one time funds to do whatever it takes to expand that form of of transit in town. We have a perfect village for biking and we all know that, right? And for walking and I mean that's what makes Weathersfield so special. So I didn't put my camera on, sorry. I don't know how you go about that. I don't know the process, but I've personally already reached out to the link folks uh hoping that they'll be able to, you know, work with me. Uh but I mean as a private business, I'm willing to help finance it because I can't build parking spaces, you know, there's no land for me. Um, you said you have a good point, um, and you're looking down the road. Um, any other public comments? Okay, guys, um, if you want to take a moment and review the minutes All right. from our meeting back in June. Mark, while... Um... The commission members are doing that. Just an FYI, uh, Dawn is no longer uh, our recording secretary. Oh, she uh, resigned uh, a week or two ago. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I know you did thank her, but that that was nice of you to do. But uh, so we are in need of a recording secretary. If anyone knows somebody who wants to make, um, you know, a few extra dollars uh, helping us prepare the minutes, um, it's not just this commission. We've got other commissions that are in need of, of help. So if you know of anybody, the town is presently soliciting for that position, send them to the uh, town website and you'll see the posting for that position. Okay. Um, any questions on the minutes? Do you have a motion to approve? Mr. Penelo, I have a second. I don't think you can second your own motion, Mr. Penelo. I'll second it. All right, Mr. Carson, thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, thank you. Guys, thank you uh, for this meeting. I assume we have no correspondence. I'm tired of asking Peter, so I'm just gonna just go sulk in the corner because we don't get any correspondence. Um, Peter, I just wanna remind, if you don't mind sending out an email to the group, I'd love the opportunity to take a look at those 60 responses. Uh, and again, anybody interested, any other commissioners interested in reviewing on that? Um, I'd love to take an, an hour or two and just open them up and or just get online and see what they've got to say. I think that's invaluable stuff. And again, if there's anything timely, I'd like to take a look at it. Um, any other questions or issues? All right, guys. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Yes. All right, guys. Turn off your computers. Thanks for showing up. We'll see you guys soon. <laughs>